to move the wing department to the east end. We may have to put on an extra shift. We've got to keep running right to capacity if we're going to meet this schedule. Labor situation won't give us and any see, trouble. According to Snyder's wire, the personnel nine, department to has been accepting applications for weeks. Four miles west of Lambert Field, 3,000 feet. Give me landing instruction. Take her to 15,000 feet, then bring her down wide open and level her off at five. Pull out sharp enough to get five Gs. I see what we want it. Did you hear what I said? Sure, sure. Take her up to 15,000 feet. Bring her down wide open. Level her off at five. You want to get five Gs. I'll take off in a second. I want to see Jones. He's coming in with a boss. Are you still trying to sell him that invention? Yeah, I just got a letter from Doc Williams. He found out what was causing the static. He's fixed it, and now it works like a clock. Now, listen, you're a good test pilot. You know your job. Now, why don't you be smart and stick to it? Instead of fiddling around with those screwy ideas that Doc has, he's a nut. Sure is a nut. So was Edison, the Wright brothers, Mark Cody, and that guy Don Amici played, uh, Alexander Graham Bell. They were all screwy until their ideas clicked. Doc hadn't tested the boss of them inventions of his, he'd have been here yet. He'd sit out in the middle of nowhere, nursing a string of airplane beacons. He's not squawking, he's got plenty of time to work on his invention and nobody to bother him. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid is going to happen to you. Don't worry about me, Pappy. Oh, won't be a minute, Tony. Oh, Mr. Jones! I got great news from Doc. Everything's all set and he's ready to show it to Mr. Lambert. I can't bother him with anything like that right now. Do you realize how busy we're going to be? This is the biggest job we've ever had, and there's a time limit on it. Well, gee, it's going to be an awful disappointment to Doc. It's all set to come on here right away. No use of him doing that. He might sit around here for a month or more without even seeing Gigi. Sorry. Well, what am I going to tell him? Tell him to send on the model, and I'll do the best I can. Hey, Bart! Have you forgot all about this? Right here this time. No funny business. Oh, hello, Pedro. When is this, Camilo? How do you are today? I'm fine, fine, thank you. How are you? Is the same Spanish, senor? Okay. But Ramona, she's got what you call it, the hay fever, you know? All night she's going. <laughs> Live one way. And me neither. That's <laughs> too bad, Pedro. Too bad. <laughs> and how is your little black bird this morning? She's singing good, I think so. I think I finally got it. You think so? NC-1482 calling KLSC. NC-1482 calling KLSC. KLSC. KLSC to NC-1482. Hello, Doc. This is Charlie. What's the weather from here in? Okay. Low hanging clouds this side of the mountains. Thanks, Doc. By the way, congratulate me. A new pilot in the family. Seven and a quarter pounds, day before yesterday. What do you think of that? <laughs> That's fine. Fine, Charlie. You can drop me a cigar on the way back. <laughs> Senor Doc, Peter, he's done something. She don't got busted, I hope so. No, she don't got busted. But after this, I wish you'd keep your hands in your pockets. Si, senor. And the next time, Peter, he... Oh, I almost forgot. The senor postman, he asked me to bring this to you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Send model for demonstration. Jerry. Send model. Let's get into that guy. What's he mean? It is no good, yes? No, it's no good, no. Hmm. He wants me to send that east and let someone else demonstrate it. How do you like that, Pedro? I don't like. 
You like? No, I don't like. What's more, I'm not going to do it. No, sir. If he thinks they're going to demonstrate that without me, he's crazy. I think so either. Discards the duties of a deputy to the best of my ability. Now swear to that. Condenado, maldito, the Yahoo ching. No, no, just say I swear. What, what do you want? Is just one in Spanish or English or both of it? Don't swear at all. Just say I swear. That's all. I swear. That's all. That's all. That's all, Pedro. That's all. Well, here, here. You can use my badge to like it back. And... Hey! <laughs> Sorry, Pedro. Getting impatient. Impatient about what? About Doc Smartle arriving. I'm expecting it any day now. Well, we're not going to shut down the plant until it gets here, if that's what you mean. <laughs> well, I didn't think you would, but have you made an appointment for us with Mr. Lambert? No, time enough when the model gets here. All right, but when it does, I'll be camping outside your office door. around, huh? Yeah. What's holding it together? Uh, never you mind about this old crate. Here, hold that for me, will you? You know, Clayton, her motor's just as good as the ones you're building today. <laughs> what brings you up here anyway? Oh, a big huddle with Lambert. Yeah. Yeah, let me have that, will you? Ah, it's just stuff fine, thanks. Is the boss's office still in the same place? Yeah. Okay, see you later. Hey, <laughs> Don't go playing around with that plane now. Be careful there, so that will fall apart in your hands. <laughs> Doc! Oh, hello, Jerry. I didn't expect to see you. All we wanted was the model. Well, I thought I'd better come along myself. You can't tell. Something might go wrong. Well, I thought you had all the kinks worked out of it. I think I have, but on the other hand, you never know. When is your date with Lambert? Well, I haven't any definite date with Lambert. I suppose from your wire, Jerry, I thought they were all hepped up waiting for a demonstration. Oh, well, they are, Doc. Really, they are. But, you know, I mean, this government contract and things. Well, and how long will we have to wait? Oh, I don't know. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe for two, three weeks. Oh, well, Jerry, I can't stay around here any longer than a week. I have a job to look out for. Well, I'll keep on Jones's tail. Meanwhile, take your stuff over to my place. At least you can duck a hotel bill. Come on, cheer up, Doc. I'll bet we put it over in less than a week. Well, what luck? Ah, uh, Jones stalled me off again. Says in a couple of days. A couple of days? He's been saying that for over a week now, and I'm getting tired of it, Jerry. Well, you and me both. I made up my mind Lambert's going to see this thing tomorrow, whether he wants to or not. Tomorrow? Yeah. Well, that's Sunday. Well, we've tried every other day. Why not? Listen, I found out he's playing golf tomorrow at Lakeside at 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Get ready, Doc. Here they come. Well, how many did you take? Five. That's what I took. That makes us all even up to here. Oh, not bad, that daughter of his. You mean as a golfer? I'll let you know about that in a minute. What a sweet disposition. Come on, Doc, let's get set. All right. Everything all right there? Mm -hmm. Right. Right down the middle. That's where you'd be if you'd learn to keep your head down. 
See you on the green. <laughs> didn't bother any. Uh, Doc and I were just testing it. That's Doc over there. Doc Williams. He and my dad used to work for you. Remember Ace Barton? Yes. Well, he was my father. I'm Jerry. I work at the plant under Clayton. Watch this. Hey, Doc, let her go. Think of that, Mr. Lambert. Is he controlling that plane from over there? Yep. Come on, I'll show you. Mr. Lambert wants to see how it works. Go to it. Hello, Mr. Lambert. Hello. Watch it bank. Make her bank the other way, Doc. Right. Say you work for me? Yes, sir. Well, why haven't I seen this before? Well, we've been trying to get in to see it for over a week, Mr. Lambert, but mm, that's well, right. You're pretty busy, and we just couldn't get in. And well, you'll get in in the morning, all right. Be in my office at 9:30, both of you. Gee, thanks, Mr. Lambert. We'll be there. Uh, uh, yes, sir. How we doing, Doc? Uh, hey, you pack it up. I'll go get the plane. Yes. Which way did it go? Uh, over there. Excuse me, but have you seen my miniature plane? Oh, yes. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Miss Lambert. I hope you don't think we did this on purpose. You know, you ought to meet my little nephew. He's six. Perhaps he might lend you a scooter. All right, let's get started. Are you set? Uh, yes, 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 Mr. Lambert, as soon as Jerry is. All right, see if Barton's ready. All right. We're ready, Barton, whenever you are. I'll take off whenever Doc gives me the signal. We expect a fair test. An honest demonstration of actual control. I don't like that crack, Mr. Jones. What do you mean? I mean just this. Once you get this plane in the air, Doc Williams is supposed to operate it without any help from you. Well, don't worry. As soon as he takes over, I won't be at the controls. All right. Martin's ready. Oh, fine, fine. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Jerry, uh, Jerry, listen. Uh, I'll take over control at 3,000 feet. Okay, Doc. Take over. Jared. 
can control that on? It's sure is Tuppy, it's all yours. Gentlemen, the ship is now flying by remote control. Which way would you like me to bank? To the left. To the left. Yes, sir. There you are, Mr. Simon. May I speak to the pilot? Yes. Certainly. Colonel Evans speaking. You're not operating that plane, are you? Absolutely not, sir. Are you sure? Certainly I'm sure. If you don't believe me, watch this. Telephone Fritz. He's waiting. Give him the news. He'll be glad to hear it. Oh, now don't tell him you fell out of that little airplane this time. Be much safer playing with my little nephew Scooter. Skip me. Jerry, Jerry, what did you jump for? Uh, I wanted to make it look good. What happened? Oh, I guess the contact wasn't strong enough. But you should have stayed with the plane. Yeah, I know it was a sad trick, but the guy got me sore. Well, how are you going to explain that crash? <laughs> I'm not even going to try to explain it. I'm going to look for a new job. Uh, I guess it's back to the desert for me. You know, we're not any too popular around here right now. Yeah, I'm sorry, Doc. Looks like you made that long trip for nothing. Oh, that's all right, Jerry. I, I don't mind. I needed a change, you know. It gets kind of lonesome out there in that shack. Yeah, but it does, it does. Say, why don't you hop off with me in the morning, huh? A eh, change right now might do you some good, too. <laughs> You're not kidding, either. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? You could help me work the kinks out of it. We might even try it with the old plane, if I had me. And if I didn't bail out. Uh-huh. That's the... Calling KLSE. Calling KLSE. Calling KLSE. Calling KLSE. All right, all right. That was coming. Keep inside your shirt. Hello, hello, this is KLSC. The doctor goes away. You call, uh, oh, here is it. You call, uh, KKMR. This is Doc, coming in. No, senor. The doctor don't come in. He goes away, and he don't come back yet, neither. Listen, this is Doc. Don't you understand? Sure, I understand, but you don't. The doc, he didn't was here. Oh, he didn't was here, eh? No, he didn't. All right, when Doc is coming back, I tell him goodbye. Oh, there's some cautious and no way to put neither. Oh, it's the senor dog. <laughs> I see your dog. Hello, Pedro. <laughs> How'd it go? Oh, bueno, senor. Bueno. Everything uh, is fine. That's fine, fine. Pedro, this is Jerry Barton. 
Hey. Diaz, amigos. Como está usted? Pedro's our nearest neighbor. He lives just over on the other side of the hill there, about 10 miles. He's been taking care of my beacons for me. I hope. Si, senor. The beacon lights is okay. Everyone. <laughs> Boy, this is really out in the middle of nowhere. How far away from civilization, anyway? Oh, 20, 25 miles, any direction you look. Well, at least we won't be bothered by tourists. No. <laughs> then I can report that the first of the 40 bombers will be ready for testing next week. That's right. Then three a week from then on. That it, Jones? That's the schedule. All right. I'll see you next week. All right. Uh, yes? Your sister to see you, Mr. Lambert. Have her come in. If there's any change, let me know. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Captain, huh? I always was a sucker for a uniform. Well, why'd you send for me this time? What's Betty done now? It's not what she's done. It's what she's going to do. She wants to go to Hollywood. So what? I won't stand for it. My dear brother, if Betty wants to go to Hollywood, she'll go to Hollywood and you know it. Well, she's had her own way ever since she was four years old. This is one time when she's not going to have her own way. Aha, teeping up on me again, huh? No, dear, I just stopped into buy a bomber. <laughs> Hello, Daddy. Why do you want to go to Hollywood? Oh, I've been reading about a place out there called Cyril's. And I just wanted to look it over. Well, you've got to stop this nonsense sometime, and it might as well be right now. Dad, how do you figure going to Hollywood is nonsense? See, every girl wants to go there. Well, it is nonsense, and I'm fed up with your fool ideas. First, you wanted to be a settlement worker. That lasted exactly two weeks. Then a musical career. Then ballet dancing. When are you going to get some... Dad, you don't seem to understand. Why don't you save your breath? These sessions are getting a little monotonous. Well, you're not going to Hollywood, and that's final. Now, what in the world am I going to do in Hollywood? Oh, very more single again. And they picked a swell place for a blowout. What do we do now? Just wait for the first man to come along and let him change it. Well, at least we got a control board out of the Lambert test. We'd have had a swell time trying to build one of those out here. Yeah, it's an ill wind, they say, that doesn't blow someone some good. How long do you think it'll take us to wire up the old crate? Mm, I don't know, two or three days, maybe a week. I'm glad that's over. Well, if you'd done that right away, instead of sitting here waiting for Prince Charming to come along, we might have made Phoenix tonight. Now, look, don't rub it in. Don't tell me what I should have done. I'm in no mood to listen to that. Uh. Oh. Uh. Oh. trouble, ladies? Oh, no. We, uh, we just stopped to pick some oranges. Oh, I see. Huh? Oh, don't mind her, stranger. She's just not in the mood. Thanks, anyway, for stopping. You're quite welcome, Mom. <laughs> I bet he'd look swell on a horse. Want me to drive in town and pick up the batteries? Mm-hmm. Might as well. Think you can find your way to the post office? Sure, just drive straight ahead ten miles and turn left. Ah, that's right. And while you're gone, I'll rustle up some dinner. Okay. Wouldn't it be just ducky to run out of gas in this no-man's land? Oh, you can think of the nicest thing. 
Remember that sign we saw back there that said last chance to fill up? Well, it wasn't a mirage. Stop worrying. We've got plenty of gas. Now, according to that gauge, it's been registering empty for the last 10 miles. One of you is lying. Uh-oh, just as I thought, it wasn't the gauge. Well, I'm beginning to think that father of mine put a Siamese curse on this trip. Somebody is doing a first-class job of jinxing it. Now what? You think we can expect two Prince Charmings in one day? Uh-oh, that's service. Hey, Pedro, come here. How do you know what was my name? All Mexicans' names are Pedro. <laughs> no, no, senorita. I got a brother, his name was Pancho. Okay, Pancho, or Pedro, uh... We're almost out of gas. Can we get some around here? Oh, see, si, senorita. This way, you got about 17 or 19 miles anyway. I think so. This way, you got about 24, maybe 22 miles. And this way over here, it don't got a road because why? It's got mountains only, you know? Steep ones. It can't put a road over there. This one over here, it didn't was very good, but you got about 30 miles too. Which way do you want to go? Very interesting. We're going to look pretty funny riding that burrow. There must be some place around here we can get gasoline. Well, the closest way, I think you better took in this road over here, you see? And you going about two miles, and you coming to a place where this road going two different ways, you know? One is going straight, the other is going to scatter, you know, left. Well, you took in the left one, going down a hill, past a little small bridge, or a little small river, and they don't got any water either, but they put the bridge there anyway. I think it was the B double C or double spear. No, it was the CCCC. That's who put the bridge. Well, anyway, you pass over this bridge, and you come into a few traces, you see. And then you're going about two miles to the other side, this way. <laughs> well, that's where I live in. Now, look, we don't care where you live. We're looking for gasoline. What's the matter with me? Excuse me. Because, <laughs> well, then for the gasoline, I think you better took in the a straight road, you see, for about one mile. And then you come into a little lake, and you better wash your clothes with your eyes, otherwise you don't see it either. <laughs> because it's don't got any water in it. It's dry lake. Well, that's the name, dry lake, you see. Well, then... Well, you winding down this road, you see, until you come into a beacon. You know what was it, a beacon, don't you? Yeah. It's one of them two high scenes, you see. You got a light on top, you know, because these airplanes is flying around, and they have to saw it so they can go from another place from where they was already and don't get lost it, you see. Well, the beacon has got the gasoline in the bottom, but you can't buy it either. You're a big help. Well, we've got to have gasoline. Okay. This is pretty dangerous for me to tell you. But the lock on this bacon is broke. And you get it pretty easy. The gasoline, I think so. But don't tell nobody what Pedro say. No, we don't tell nobody what Pedro say. We'll take it and argue about it later. Come on, let's go. Hasta la vista. Come on, Ramona. You don't need any gasoline, did you? No. <laughs> we got something here. I guess one more can will be enough. We better fill it up. Don't take any chances. Gasoline stealing, eh? Oh, I wouldn't exactly call it stealing. We're willing to pay for it. Does it belong to you? Well, no, it belongs to the government. Of course, I'm 
responsible for it, and it's not supposed to be sold. Well, but... brother, you're either selling it or making us a present of it because it's not coming out of that tank. <laughs> Looks like we're caught in the act. <laughs> yeah, it does look like... Yeah, it's caught in the act. You're both under arrest. Under arrest? Are you kidding? Nope. Stealing government gasoline's a pretty serious offense. You see that sign there, or can't you read without your glasses? I'm not superstitious. I don't believe in signs. Well, we weren't stealing it. I told you we want to pay for it. And I told you it was not for sale. Don't argue with him, Aunt Maud. Five dollars for the gasoline and fifteen for your conscience, Skippy. Sorry, but this is one time the Lambert money won't do you any good. Say, what's going on around here? Do you two know each other? Yes, slightly. Very slightly. Come on, both of you. Get into the station wagon. Into what? The station wagon. Uh, my scooter. I will not. Come on, Maud. Here, take your money. Are you going to come and get into my car? I am not. Okay. Certainly is a determined young man. Take off that brake. Okay, have it your way. Here we are, end of the line. Out to come. Doc! We got Jeff. Oh. Well, how do you do, ladies? My name is Williams. Doc Williams. And this is Miss Betty Lambert. Do you remember her father, G.B. Lambert? G. Oh, yeah. And her aunt, Miss Maud Lambert. Not Lambert, not Miss, it's Mrs. Oh, pardon me, Mrs. Marshall. Mrs. Maud Marshall. A couple of charming gasoline thieves. Huh? Ah, I caught him red-handed at number four beacon. Oh. Come on, come on. Stop playing cops and robbers. Just tell us how much our fine is and we'll be on our way. Well, that's not up to me. You see, that's up to Judge Gildersleeve. When will the judge be through here again? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me see. He uh, was here last Friday and sentenced those horse thieves, remember? Now, then he stayed over for the hanging. That made him a day late on his regular schedule. He comes around the second Thursday of it, but he might not get here till the following Tuesday or Wednesday. Isn't that just ducky? And in the meantime, what are we supposed to do? Well, there's not very much you can do except wait. Wait? Yes. I will not. Well, we've got no bars on the windows here, but prisoners never escape, especially without the keys of their cars. However, if you want to try to leave, that's up to you, but you won't get very far. Supper's at 6 o'clock. Come on, Doc. Well, where do we go from here? I'll bite. Well, what's the idea, Jerry? What, what are you up to? Oh, just rubbing it in a little on a spoiled brat. I couldn't resist the temptation. Besides, she had it coming to her. Uh, what about her father? He might not like this. He ought to thank me. It's about time somebody taught her a lesson for her own good. I'll ride over tonight and send him a wire. Come on, let's put on some extra grub. He took his keys, too. Well, they can't stop me. I'll walk. Where to? Over this way, you've got uh, 17, 19 miles, maybe. Over this way, she don't got no road. Because why? Because she's got mountains. Where you have mountains, you don't put no road. And over this way, uh, you've got maybe uh, 30 miles. Which way you go? Ma, this is no time to clown. Yeah, well, there's no time to walk either. I know when I'm licked. Come in. All right, Warden, show me to my cell. What about your niece? Oh, she's running a temperature. She'll cool off. Where do I go? Over here. 
sorry, this is the best we have to offer. <laughs> All the comforts of home. Mm, that bacon smells good, Doc. Make mine good and crisp and turn the eggs over easy. See you later. Now, there's a woman with a sense of humor. I wish I could say as much for that niece of hers. Betty doesn't know what she missed. You're quite a cook, Doc. Thank you. You know, you'd make them so a good wife. <laughs> Aren't you going to take something into your niece? Oh, no. She's gone dramatic. She wouldn't touch a mouthful. Not even a cup of coffee? Well, maybe. Sure, sure. Here you are. Cream? Sugar? No, thank you. He takes it black. You hear a crash, you know she's still dramatic. Look, Jerry, how long are you going to keep this thing up? I'm beginning to feel like a heel. Well, as far as the ant's concerned, I am too. But that other one, <laughs> I got a long way to go before I'm even with her. Mm, that's just the part I don't like. You're allowing your personal feelings to run away with you. Well, I don't know. After all, they did steal the gasoline. You can't get around that. We could, if it had been anyone else. Well, but it's just... But how long are you going to keep them here? Well, that depends on what I hear from her old man. That reminds me, I'd better drive over and wire him right away. Well, I'll clean up the dishes, I guess. There can't be any ifs about it. Now, what's holding us up? Oh, it's a combination of things, Mr. Lambert. Delayed shipments, last-minute changes and specifications. We've committed ourselves to a definite date. It'll look bad if we don't make it. I'm not worried about making the date. We're ahead of schedule as it is, and as soon as these shipments arrive, we'll make up for this lost time. You know, Jones, this is a pretty sweet contract, and there's going to be more of them. This is the best news I've had all week. Miss uh, Pollard, take a wire. <laughs> Mr. Jerry Barton, care of the postmaster, Indian Springs, Arizona. My uh, dear Jerry. Well, isn't that just dandy? It's as good news as no. I'll say it is. Hey, Doc? <laughs> sure gives you plenty of leeway. Is it any answers I was talking by? No, Pedro. Thanks for bringing the wire over. Oh, it's nothing. Adios. Well, good morning, everybody. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Well, hello, Finch. Uh, I mean, Pedro. Thanks for fixing us up. Oh, you're welcome. Any friend to Senior Doc is a friend of Pedro. <laughs> But uh, yesterday, why did you don't tell me she was coming here? Well, we didn't know it ourselves. Oh, you didn't? No, we didn't. Oh. You got the gasoline all right, no? Yes, we got the gasoline all right. Didn't we, Sheriff? Oh, so you're mixed up in this too, huh? I think I don't stay me here anymore. I, uh, <laughs> I, I have to go some other places. Adios, senor. Senor. Well, how about some breakfast, Warden? I'm famished. Oh, sure, sure. Coming right up. Uh, sit here. Thank you. Well, ladies, there are a few rules around here which I think you ought to know. In order to keep our prisoners out of mischief and to keep time from hanging too heavily on their hands, we let them work. Uh, Doc and I have a lot of work to do on his invention, so starting tomorrow you can wash the dishes, scrub the floors, make the beds, and... Looks like the windows need washing again. You can relieve Doc of the cooking. Of course, I don't suppose you can do as well, but we'll have to take a chance on that. We do the washing here once a week, on Monday. You'll only have to iron the shirts. You can do your own things at the same time. It'll be quite all right. You don't mind if we uh, chop some wood in our spare time? No, that won't be necessary. Pedro takes care of that. 
Just make yourselves generally useful. And suppose we don't. What then? Then you don't eat. Well, I guess that settles that. Think how much worse off we'd be if we'd been caught by Death Valley Scotty. We'd have had 20 or 30 rooms to clean. Soup's up. The Chinese biscuits are good. Tell it to Maud. You're certainly spoiling us with all this good cooking. Brother, you ain't seen nothing yet. Wait till you taste my chocolate cake. Lars. Hey, Doc. Hmm? Look. Say, Maude, how many more of these do you want? Oh, maybe three or four more. Three or four? Gosh, it only took two buckets for me. You can't understand why it takes so much for you. Hey, look out. No! Help! Oh. Gee, are you hurt? Gosh, I don't know. It was kind of bump. I was trying to... <laughs> I think you'd better lie down for a while. I think you've carried this far enough, Jerry. Oh, I don't know. I think it's doing her a lot of good. Anyway, we've got her old man's permission, haven't we? And in black and white, too. Well, I don't agree with him that Maud needs a lesson, too. I think she's pretty regular. Why, Doc, you old desert rat. Don't tell me you're starting to fall for Maudie. Well, not exactly, but... Well, I've been pretty lonesome out here at times, and... Well, gee, having a woman around makes a lot of difference. Thanks for them kind words, partner. Well, what was all that about commission in black and white and Maud needing a lesson, too? Come on now, boys. Tell Aunt Maudie all about it. Well, well yeah, see, I, 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 in the first, uh, what happened, first last place, one at a time. 
I think you had your hand up first, Doc. Suppose you tell me. Oh, well, it was your idea. Suppose you tell her. Well, all right. Here. Oh, so that's it. I thought you were taking a little personal revenge on Betty, but I didn't know my brother was in on it. I told him I thought he was going too far. Uh-uh. Jerry, you're doing a good job. Huh? This is the first time in her life she hasn't had her own way. Keep it up. In fact, I'll help you. And from now on, I'll have as much fun as you. I told you I thought she was pretty regular. You're pretty regular yourself, partner. Doc? It looks like your lonesome days are pretty nearly over. <laughs> well, ladies, here's part of tomorrow's watch. Part of it? You haven't been saving it, have you, for our benefit? Oh, no, but we may not have any help around here next week. Thought we'd better get it all done. I'll go get the rest. Well, this is the last straw. I'll admit it's getting a little tiresome. Tiresome? That's not the word for it. It's vicious. Vicious premeditated persecution. Well, I'm fed up. I'll show them how I'll wash those clothes. <laughs> Only wish there were more of them. I wouldn't do that. You know what'll happen. Sure, he's going to have a tough time getting dressed from now on. All this trouble over a couple of measly gallons of gasoline. That's no way for a grown woman to act. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? No, I'm not ashamed of myself. I only hope this one's this Sunday shirt. been a little game, huh? What, what are you talking about? Take a look at that, will you? Well, what do you know about that? What's this? What's happened here? Nothing to what's going to happen. Hey, look out! What are you doing? Keeping me a prisoner here on a trumped-up charge. Making a servant girl of me? I'll show you. That father of mine, when I see him. Oh! We'll both be sorry for what you've done. This little game of yours. Have some more. Here. Ham. Eggs. What more do you want? More dirty clothes, huh? Well, bring them in. What are you waiting for? Well, this isn't going to help matters. You're only going to make them. Come on, you fight like a man. You great big bully. Ma, you let me go. Let me go out there and really finish this thing. You'll do nothing of the sort. You've made a big enough fool of yourself already. What started the cyclone? She found the wire. Oh. Well, you can stay if you want to, but I'm leaving. Judge Gilders, leave her. No, Judge Gilders, please. Well, where do we go from here? I don't know, but I wish her old man would hurry and show up. <laughs> so do I. Before she sets fire to the place. Attention all planes and ground stations. Lambert Farmer, number X291, missing. Disappeared from Lambert Field, 2.30 p.m. Suspect foreign agents involved. Relay this message. Did he say to Lambert Farmer? That's the way I heard it. Holy smokes, imagine getting away with a thing like that. And in broad daylight, too. All right, let's go. Now listen, Betty. Are you coming or not? Yes, but I ought to thank you. Come on. Huh, where do you think you're going? That is none of your business. Oh, but it is my business. Listen, Skippy, let's stop playing games. Give me the keys to my car. Sorry, but I can't do that. How much longer are you and my father going to keep this up? Regardless of the telegram from your father, you are under arrest, in my custody, and your car is impounded. Now laugh that off. 
Well, with or without the car, I'm leaving. Oh. And you just try to stop me. Oh, that's all right. I told you several days ago. Any time you want to try to escape, go ahead. That's exactly what I propose doing. And I also told you you wouldn't get very far. We shall see. Come on, Maud. Well, which way? Somewhere over in there. Come on. Now what? Oh, they'll be back. We're over the mountains now. I think we better drop him somewhere along here. That's a good idea. Say, have you any idea in which direction we're headed or where we're going or anything? Yes, we're headed for the highway, I think. Once we're on it, someone's bound to pick us up. That's enough walking in this stuff without carrying half a ton of it in your shoes. Well, anything is better than staying back there. Jerry, I don't like the idea of those two women being out there all by themselves. No telling where they'll end up. I think I ought to take the station wagon and go out and see if I can find them. Well, I don't like it either, but they can't get very far. They'll come back tonight. It won't take longer than a half hour to find them in the morning. Why couldn't you wait until morning? You have to be half owl and half burrow to find your way through this place at night. Well, we know we might be walking in a circle and we'll find ourselves at the back door of the shack. Maud, stop crabbing and save your breath. You're going to need it. Have you figured out where we are yet? I've got to set her down soon. We're past the mountain. And according to this map, there's an emergency field down there among the beacons somewhere. The station call is KLSE. You think we dare take a chance of using the radio? What? And have a reception committee waiting for us? Uh, I should say not. I always send shivers up and down my spine to hear that sound. They never attack anybody, do they? Oh, no, no, not unless they're good and hungry. Maud. That's enough for me. Maud, where are you going? Back to Devil's Island. Away from me! She's not used to that sort of thing. She's the one I'm worried about. Uh, she wasn't used to housework either. You had a pretty good job of it, though. Much better than Betty. Boy, I'd hate to be the guy she marries. I wonder. Hmm. They certainly seem worried about us, don't they? Yes, they knew we'd be back. That's what burns me up. Well, we'll just ignore them. Leaving again in the morning. <laughs> hey, Ramona, you don't sound very good up there. It's more sounding like the cylinders all together don't do something. Hey, hey Ramona, something has happened. Peggy Branca is where was I think so. You don't go to sleep now. We got to find him pronto. You reckon they want to eat before they leave? Oh, stop worrying about them. Just set the table for two. Let you and I eat and get out and make that test flight. That's a lot more important. Come on, Maud, let's get started. Well, what are you waiting for? Did you smell that bacon? I'm waiting for my breakfast. Now, let's not stop for that. It'll only mean another argument. Let's get out. Listen, if you think I'm going to hike all the way to the highway on an empty stomach, you're crazy. I'm going to eat. All right. Go ahead. I'll wait for you. Aren't you going to eat? No. I'd rather starve than eat another mouthful of his food. Well, suit yourself. Shall I like that bacon smells awfully good. Oh. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, looks like bread and water for the culprits this morning, eh, Doc? Well, I, uh, that is, you well, see... Well, this prisoner is going to eat a hearty breakfast. Come on, give me that frying pan. Here. 
Oh, that service. No, Thanks. that's all right. What about Tess? Uh... No, she'd rather starve. Doc, I'll send you a set of dishes when I get home. I'll take down of her allowance. <laughs> sure looks like we could use them. That it's a long walk. This is the first jail I was ever in that had room service. Thanks, Doc. You like a little more? No, thank you. All right. Come in. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? I've just had a little accident. I ran off the highway and wrecked my car. Oh, that's too bad. Where did it happen? Well, I don't know exactly. It's five or six miles down the road. Sit down. Have something to eat. Well, I'll just have a cup of coffee, thank you. I'm in a hurry to get to San Diego. Could either of you gentlemen take me to the nearest railroad station? Sure, sure. I'll drive you down. I'll be glad to pay you for it. Ah, oh, don't worry about that. Oh, come on, sit down. Here, take my chair. I'll finish. Oh, thank you. There you go. Listen, I think we're going to get a break. We may even get a ride to the station. You mean Jerry's going to drive us there? Well, there's a man out there who's wrecked his car, and Jerry's going to drive him. And maybe we can horn in if we play our cards right. Oh, so you'd rather starve, huh? You know, your face looks familiar. Haven't I seen you somewhere? I don't know. Well, where are you from? Oh, uh, I've been down in Mexico. Just came across the border this morning. Oh, you'll have to excuse our crockery. We had a little uh, accident. Oh, that's all right. Thank you. Well, looks like we'll have to call off the test until this afternoon, eh, Jerry? Oh, no. I'll be back in an hour or so. Go ahead and get ready. Okay. Anything else you like, well, just uh, speak up. Help yourself. Thank you very much. Now, listen, you keep your mouth shut and let me handle this. We can save a lot of wear and tear on our feet. Look, Jerry, what's the chances of stowing away in the service wagon on your trip to the station? Oh, you know I couldn't do that. That'd be helping my own prisoners to escape. Prisoners? Oh, will you stop playing the Lone Ranger? Miss Lambert, I thought I made the situation quite clear to you. However, I can repeat oh, it. Oh, come on, Maude, minutes. before I add murder to my crime. That's G.B. Lambert's daughter. He's a big plane manufacturer back east. I can't seem to make her understand she's under arrest. Arrest? Yeah, she thinks I'm kidding when I tell her I'm a federal officer. Well, that's not getting you to the station. I'll be with you in a minute. Now, look, Doc, you don't want little Morty to walk all that distance, do you? Well, I... You know, we could get way down in here out of sight, and he'd never know you took it. Uh, that's where I go. Oh, well, then we could go back in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, Doc, please, will you? Well, I'll tell you. You wait until he takes that fellow to the station, and, and I'll see what I can do. Ah, uh, that's my ducky walkie. Uh, hey, give me the Excuse me. Excuse me. What that for noses? What is it, Pedro? What's wrong? Oh. Oh. Last night, Peter here hear something. I don't know it was airplane right. So I look all night, I don't find it either. Until this morning. This morning I find it. 
is a truck all over in little pieces. The driver is killed. Dead. Here's the number right off the wing. Gee, but that's the missing bomber. Gee. Okay, let's go. Jerry, Jerry, what do you think? Pedro found the missing Lambert bomber, wrecked. No. See, see, the driver's killed. Come on, we'd better report it at once. See, see. Hurry up. See. Get away from that radio. KLSE calling. KLSE calling. Get away from that radio. Hey, senor Don. Que pasa? What he was doing? Where's he gone? Now I know where I've seen that face before. He used to work for Lambert. Outside, all of you. All right, into the station wagon. Come on. All right, get in, all of you in the front seat. Come on, you drive, big boy. All right, make it snappy. And no tricks, understand? That's better still. Talk to me. Jerry, can you hear me? Yes, now pay strict attention. We need your help. Can you hear a low frequency buzz up there? Now tell me if it increases in volume. Yes, it does. Good. Throw in the remote switch. Did the bulb in the center of the instrument board light up? Well, it's flashing on and off. Flashing on and off, Doc. Oh, Jerry, it's the same trouble we've always had, only partial control. Well, try it, try it. At least try to turn it. No, it's no use. It won't work. We'll try it with the coil connection reverse, huh? Oh, there's still something wrong with the hookup. Look out, Doc. Let me try something. Jerry? Yes? Yes? Jerry, the light's burning steady now. The light's burning steadily now, Doc. Good. That's it. We got it. What did you do? I don't know. The last thing I did was to change the frequency hookup. You're turning him! You're turning him! Betty, we're turning around. Oh, they're bringing it back. Okay, Doc, you got him. Now straighten her out. Keep him coming, Doc. Pedro is going to be ready for him. Bring him down without crashing? I don't know, but here goes. Doc, you did it! Come on, Pedro. Throw off that gun. Pedro, he is going to took care of you this time. Oh, Jerry. Brace yourself, Doc. Here comes Morty. Mark? Ma, that's Dad. Oh, boy, is he going to be surprised. Well, I don't mind telling you, I thought this trip was going to be just another headache. I can't get over you. <laughs> I've never seen you looking better in all my life. Here, I've been here three hours, and we haven't had one argument. What's happened? Plenty. But let her tell you about it on the way home. And what about Doc's invention? Do you want to buy it? Because if you don't, I'll buy it myself. Why, certainly. When can you lads leave for the East? Oh, well, Jerry can leave right away with us. Can't you, Jerry? 
Oh. Yeah, sure. It suits me. Well, Ducky, it looks like you and I'll have to go back in that old crate of yours. Mm -hmm. That's okay with me. When we get there, you know, I think I'll build a museum around it. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's a terrible. Where the hell, Judge Gillisley? There's quite a couple of gasoline things. Where are they? Here. Here. Court's open. Guilty or not guilty? No, guilty. How many gallons? Twenty. Twenty gallons? Yep. Twenty bucks? Or twenty days? Twenty bucks, Dad. Thank you. Court's adjourned. See you next Thursday. Did you see what I saw? Thank you.